Hi, I'm the Friendly Neighborhood Enderman, and in this video, we're going to take a look at how to use IntelliJ and JGUnit4 together. So, right off the bat, I want to mention that this video isn't going to be of quite the same quality as the other videos, because I'm doing this as a one-shot screencast, and I'm not actually doing any editing. So, uh, well, bear with me. With uh, that out of the way, let's get to it. So the two biggest issues people usually have when trying to work with our repos and uh, IntelliJ is that they either open the repo incorrectly in IntelliJ, so the default settings just kind of don't work out, or they uh, import the wrong JGUnit4 jar. In some cases also can't import it at all, but we'll address all of that. So first of all, you got to make sure that you have one of your repos. And in this case, we're going to look at week 10. So you see here I have slash week 10, which is my week 10 repo. And that's the one I want to make into an IntelliJ project now. So I open up IntelliJ, and I'm sure you know how to do that on your respective uh, platforms. And then we just wait a bit for IntelliJ to load. And we're waiting and waiting and where oh wait was over here got it all right so um, what we want to do now is actually not not a new project not open but we want to import a project and uh, now you got to navigate to the repo that you have cloned in my case it's here and what you want to be careful about now is that you want to select the root of the repo and not like the source directory but just Select the root of the repo, OK, and uh, make sure that create project from existing sources is ticked up there. Then we just click next here, that's fine. Here you can see that it found a directory with uh, Java source code, so it's going to mark the source directory as a source directory. And uh, it can't find any external libraries, that's fine. Uh, modules, that's good. I'm selecting my JDK. If you don't have anything here, you got to add one, but it should find your JDK automatically if you have it installed. And uh, that's just about it. All right, so now the project is uh, open correctly. Like so, if we look here, we can see that the source directory is blue. This means that it's marked as a source directory, which is good. Um, so now we want to open the source directory and open the list processor test file. If you look up here, you can see a very, very small plus sign. Click on that and you'll expand the imports. And you can see that they are red because JGUnit and Hamcrest, these, uh, uh, these are in like jars or well external libraries that don't ship with Java, so we gotta we gotta download them. Now, before uh, we look at this, what you want to make sure is that your uh, uh, you have the uh, JGUnit plugin activated. So you go to File, and then you click Settings, go to Plugins, and just type in JGUnit for uh, JGUnit here, and make sure that this box is ticked. If it's ticked, you're all good. Uh, if it's not ticket and then you're all good all right now let's go up here again and here it will differ between I think newer Macs and everything else on most machines you want to go up here and to fix this import you press alt and enter and then you can see add JGUnit4 to class path on newer Macs I think it's option enter so try both of those Anyway, you want to do add JGUnit4 to ClassPath, not 5.2 or anything else. And if you see only find jar on web and not these two, then you haven't ticked that JGUnit plugin box I just showed you. All right, so let's do that. And OK. And it's going to download JGUnit 4.12, which is good. And now you can see that this went from red to white. So we're all good there. And this actually, the test class itself is fine now. So we can actually kind of run it. We can't run it because it won't compile. Uh, error? Let's remove that. We can't run it because it won't compile as we don't have the list processor class and, and stuff. 
but let's just run it anyway because it's going to try to run it and when when I click these two arrows here to run the class this runs the whole class you can also run like a specific test by going to the test and just click clicking the small arrow there and now if you look up here in the right corner you can see that you have a few different so-called run configurations so if you want to run the whole test class you gotta click here and make sure that just list processor test is selected and then you can click the small arrow up here to run it well in our case right now it won't even compile because we don't have list processor uh, or any of his methods um, so uh, well you can do alt enter again and create that class to begin with and uh, the default package is fine so uh, can add it to git and then you just start your work in here and that should be pretty much it oh yeah one more thing if you don't get that start screen that I had in the beginning you can also do the same thing uh, for creating a new project from an existing source by going to file new project from existing sources and then it's all the same as I showed you in the beginning so hopefully this clears some things up and uh, yeah that's pretty much it thanks for watching